Scary Mysteries Twisted Twos, Alan and Terry Westerfield, and Corporal William McIntyre. Tales of hauntings, murder, and scary mysteries. Every week, Twisted Twos dives into a pair of uniquely terrifying true stories that are worthy of a more in-depth look. For this week, we focus on the disappearance of two brothers in North Carolina and the mysterious death of a Canadian corporal. Get ready for Scary Mysteries Twisted Twos. Number 1. Alan and Terry Westerfield It was 1964 and 11-year-old Terry Westerfield and his younger brother Alan, who was 7, were like any other kids in their town. With nothing much to do in Fayetteville, North Carolina, the boys often found themselves at the local movie theater. On September 12th, Margie Westerfield had to work. She was a single mother to the two boys after separating from her third husband, Carl Bach, a military officer who lived at Fort Bragg. Margie headed out that Saturday morning, hiring a babysitter to watch after her sons. Shortly after she left, Carl, the boy's stepfather, arrived at the home and told the babysitter to leave. She was hesitant and stalled for as long as she could, but finally had to leave at around 12.30 or 1 p.m. A witness said during this time, Alan was seen outside the home riding his bike. Another neighborhood boy stopped by the Westerfield house at the same time, asking Brock if Terry could come out and play, but Bach said he couldn't because Terry was being punished. According to Bach, at around 4 p.m., he took the boys to the movie theater because Terry asked him if they could go. They wanted to watch a double feature, a western film, no name on the bullet, and a sci-fi flick, The Atomic Man. Margie arrived home at 5.30 p.m., where she found Carl at the house. The two argued when Margie found out that Bach had sent home the babysitter and took the boys out to the movies. But instead of going to find them, Margie changed clothes and went to the NCO club on Pope Air Force Base as she had habitually done. Bach later told police that he went back to the theater at 7.45 and waited for the boys to meet him on the corner. He stayed there until 9.30 p.m. and left after they never came out. He then questioned Margie and asked if she had picked them up, pressing the issue. At around 2 a.m. when the boys still hadn't come home, Margie then called police. During the investigation, authorities had more than a dozen officers search for the kids throughout the city. They followed up numerous tips and searched for the whereabouts of cars that had been seen in the area. They also chased leads out of state and even asked the FBI for help, but still, there was no hint as to where they had gone. But police did have a main suspect, and that was Carl Bach himself. He was the last person to see the boys alive, and they interviewed and re-interviewed him throughout the years. Bach's story of dropping them off at the theater was suspicious, especially since the boys frequent in the theater and the staff knew what they looked like. However, on September 12th, the theater workers said they never saw the brothers come in. What's more, when Bach said he went to pick them up, not once did he ever get out of his car to ask the theater employees if they had seen the boys when they didn't come out to meet him at 9 p.m. Carl, though, was never charged for anything because there was no evidence found linking him to the boys' disappearance. Over the years, investigators have interviewed him, hoping he would confess or slip up and say something to incriminate himself. In one instance, an officer traveled to Tomo, Wisconsin to see Carl in 2012. He was around 89 years old by this time. The investigators approached him with the possibility of a letter of qualified immunity, but Bach declined, saying, I was in the military police, and if I hadn't been in the MPs, that would be a pretty good proposition. Carl died on May 9, 2016, at 93 years old. He was buried with military honors, and no one knows whether he is actually linked in some way to the missing brothers. As for the boy's biological father, Thomas Westerfield, he was cleared for suspicion during the initial investigation. Westerfield never stopped looking for his sons, documenting his story in his diary. He chased every single lead he could, from random tips to consulting mediums. In 1978, he committed suicide out of grief and was buried in Cross Creek Cemetery. Margie went on to remarry again and lived out her life in Laura, South Carolina. She expressed to investigators how she felt responsible for the boys' disappearance because she chose to head to the NCO club, even after knowing the boys were supposedly taken to the theater at 5.30 p.m. In a 1994 interview, 
She expressed hope that her boys were still alive. Margie died on February 27, 2003, at the age of 70, without ever knowing what happened to her sons. Today, the case of the missing Westerfield boys is still open. Number 2. Corporal William McIntyre On April 21, 1984, the dead body of Corporal William McIntyre was found inside his Oakville, Ontario apartment. It was determined he had died from a gunshot wound to the back of his head. Although the death occurred while McIntyre was off duty, the Ontario Provincial Police Commissioner stated his death was work-related. William McIntyre lived much of his early life in Oakville. Considered a good student, he took up an apprentice on a mechanics course before deciding to become a police officer, and he officially joined the force on May 1, 1972. During his tenure, he worked in various locations, including Tabermary, Mount Forest, and Exeter. He was efficient in his work, too, often receiving letters of commendation and appreciation from the public through most of his career. By October 3, 1983, he was promoted to the status of corporal. During this time, he requested to be transferred and began working at the Toronto branch in the technical support sector. His main job included undercover work while also doing physical surveillance. The officer quietly followed around mobsters, drug dealers, and suspected killers on a daily basis. Just a month short from 12 years on the job, his supervisor called him in regarding a work assignment but he couldn't be reached. When they checked his home, they found his personal vehicle as well as his undercover car inside the parking lot. Shortly after that is when McIntyre was found dead in his apartment. During the investigation, police believed a thief and accomplished locksmith named Rex Yates had killed the officer in retaliation for a jailhouse confession that McIntyre retrieved from him about a robbery he was involved in. They thought that Yates had discovered the undercover cop, followed him, and then killed him seeking revenge. In the end, though, there was no concrete evidence linking Yates to McIntyre's death. Moreover, in 1990, Yates and his accomplice drowned in a mysterious boating accident close to Wolf Island. Aside from Yates, police also looked at potential suspects within the department itself. There are some who believe McIntyre was killed because he was gay and was ready to come out of the closet and might expose other officers. His sister, however, thought that the suggestion that her brother was gay was ridiculous. Today, the case of William McIntyre's death remains a mystery. Despite the $50,000 reward posted in 1997, there are still no leads generated and the case remains unsolved. So there were two of the most mysterious and killer stories around. The world can be a crazy place and Twisted Twos is sure to show you why. If you enjoyed this video then please remember to subscribe and check out some of our other videos we know you'll love. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.